Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we'll be installing Windows 1.0. Now, you may be asking yourself, like in all my other videos, why am I doing this? Well, to be honest with you, this one is a completely pointless video because Windows 1, 2, and technically 3.0 were quickly changed out by the time you got to the Windows 3.11, which finally came out with a GUI for everybody. So this is more or less just a, hey, I actually have a Windows 1.0 on my system. So yeah, this is, video is mainly pointless except for more of a nostalgic reasoning. But also again, just sit there and tell people I got Windows 1.0. And a shout out goes to my good friend Angel because he's the reason why I'm doing this video because he wants that Windows 1.0 on his computer to say he has it. He has no idea how to use it or even what it does or again has no idea about what he's going to want to do with Windows 1.0 or nothing. But I told him I'll make him this video and I told him I'll teach him how to put Windows 1.0 on his computer. So here we go. Now in my previous videos I installed MS-DOS 6.22 and MS-DOS 7.1. So for you to install Windows 1.0, you have to install an MS-DOS in your system. So for this thing, this video, I went ahead and did that already because it would just take another 8 to 10 more minutes to do everything. So I went ahead and skipped all that. Um, so before you do any of this, make sure you have a brand new virtual machine created. Uh, label it Windows 1.0. And then make sure that it is set for, I mean, yeah, it's set for MS-DOS as the actual virtual machine. Don't set it for Windows 3.11 because it won't work properly. I mean, it will, but it has some kind of glitching. It's easier to set it with MS-DOS as the default virtual. And then go ahead and install your version of MS-DOS 622, or in my case, I like 7.1. Um, I like 7.1 because it has native mouse built into it so it's easier to do the installs for DOS and a little bit quicker. Um, but either way, it's up to you. Um, so in this case, I'm assuming that you've already went ahead and, and got MS-DOS installed on your computer and you have a new virtual machine obviously created to look exactly like mine. Now to give you a quick showing of everything under Edit Virtual Machines. Again, I left everything as default and if you did install DOS, you would know that, hey, I had to add the floppy. And as you can see here, I installed DOS 7.1 on mine. Um, under options, as you can see here, general, I had the virtual name as Windows 1.0, and it's set to other and MS-DOS. If you don't have this set up this way, go ahead and change it now. Right? It's not gonna hurt, so I can change it to Microsoft Windows 3.1. It doesn't matter to them until I hit okay. So just make sure you set to other and MS-DOS and you have floppy support. Also, links are in my description below for the virtual machine once it's all said and done. It's also going to have the install files that I'm using. So you will be able to get to MS-DOS 7.1 from down there as well as Windows 1.0 install files. Um, another quick note to add, this version of Windows 1.0 has been modified just a little bit. Um, native Windows 1.0 does not have mouse support at all. Um, so what I went ahead and did for my versions is I went ahead and updated the mouse support using Windows 2.0. I just took the drivers from Windows 2.0 and put them on the Windows 1 CD. So when we go ahead to install it later, it automatically gives you the support drivers for your mouse. Otherwise your mouse won't work and you still gotta use keyboard. Is that a problem? No, not really. Um, most of the stuff you're gonna see here is all technically keyboard based. Um, but yeah, so you also can see down here in the description, I have a set version for Windows 100 bin 3.44. For most people that means nothing um, for a few people who've ever been around Windows long enough, understand exactly what that means. Um, pretty much what happens is with Windows 1.0, and you'll see it later because I'll demo it before I put this version in, um, it doesn't boot properly. The virtual machine is not meant to run Windows 1.0. 
And that is why we are trying to show it to you today is because technically this is not supported. The earliest version of Windows that's supported is Windows 3.11. So Windows 1, 2, and 3 are actually not supported in Windows. Or, I'm so, well, in VMware. Um, they don't support it at all. So you have to do a little bit of altering for it. And that's where the 3.34 comes in down there. Um, but again, I will show it to you what it's going to look like towards the end. Um, just make sure when you do this yourself to always add this section in here. I'm also going to put this in the description below so you have, you know, the code you need to make it work properly. Okay, so enough ranting. Let's go on. So power on this virtual machine. As you can see, MS-DOS 7.1 is loaded. Okay, and it also has CD-ROM support as well, just like we did in 6.22. All right, so for this, we're going to have to go ahead and start mounting our disks. So go back in the bottom corner and click on your floppy icon. Go to Browse. All right, now I'm going to go to my ISO folder and click on Windows 1. Now the version we're going to be installing is 1.04, which I do believe is the latest version of Windows 1.4 made. If there is anyone later than that, let me know, and I will do a video on updating that. So you have seven disks in here. You're only going to technically use six of them. The special disk is for other reasons, I guess. I've never actually had to use it. Um, again, because a lot of the stuff that we're doing here is so old that you have to have a real purpose for it or software that's requiring this. Um, again, because nobody uses Windows 1 or 2 or even 3, you know, it's 3.11 and above, you know, a lot of the stuff here is very basic. It's not going to be, it's more or less, like I said, for nostalgic purposes, if anything. So we're going to click on Setup, hit OK. All right. So first thing is we got to get to our A drive. And then from here, you can go ahead and look at the directory. As you can see, it lists everything that's inside there. You also can see here, mouse.drv, that is the file that I altered. So when we go ahead and install the mouse driver, you'll be able to see that the mouse is actually going to work. I didn't want to do a video showing that the mouse didn't work and having to do all the extra work to it. Might as well just give it to you and just save us a headache because I said most people are not going to ever use this for anything. Um, again, if you hit DIR, it lists it up and straight down making it a little bit difficult to see everything. So, but to run the setup is just very simple, setup.exe. Okay, here's the welcome screen, letting you know that you have to start Windows, the preparation, printing from it, everything you need. So from here, press C to continue. Name of the directory. I always leave it default, but again, you can name it Windows 3.11, 1.0, It doesn't matter, but I usually leave it as the default. Hit enter. Now it's telling you to make sure you have all these disks ready to go. And we do, as you, if you download them directly from me, you have every one of these disks ready to go. Um, where it says down here, you're going to also need to know your printer, your graphics adapter, and your pointer. Um, there is only one selection for each one of them, you know, when you're using virtual machines, so it's not that confusing. So you don't have to really know much more than besides what I'm going to tell you in the video. So for here, press C to continue. Okay. For keyboard, um, if you're not from America, Pick any keyboard that works out for you, but if you speak English and you're from America, go ahead with number one. So press one, enter. Now this is where the the mouse driver went. It has to go. This one we're heading number two, and the reason being that VMware's only use um, PS2 adapters for your mice, even though that one says bus slash serial mouse. I already went ahead and copied the PS2 adapter from the Windows 2.0 install and converted it over this. So even though it says bus slash serial, it's actually a PS2 mouse. So for this case, we're going to hit 2 and hit enter. All right, now we have a list of all the graphics that we need to do. 
For this, the only one we need to pick on is number six, which is the EGA more than 64K with enhanced color display. It has to be an enhanced color display, again, because the drivers that come with VMware only handle that. If you choose anything else, you will get errors and you'll have to start this all over again. So make sure you press six and then hit enter. Now this is called disk swapping time. So pretty much all we're gonna be doing is keep putting disks in. So now they're asking for the build disk. So control alt to release your mouse. Hit the floppy drive, go to browse, click on the build one, okay. And this is going to be very quick. So the second you hit C on here, you're going to have to press Control Alt to get back out and do it again, as you'll see in a second. See? So now it's going to look for the utilities, which should now install your printer. We don't have a printer, so there's no reason to install your a printer drivers. So hit C. I'm going to press No because I don't want to install a printer or a plotter. Now we're going to have to put in the font disk. And then this is pretty much like it's going to be for Windows 1, 2, 3, 311, and 95. But with 95, I actually have a CD. So when we get to the 95 section, it's going to be much faster because 95 had 19 disks, I believe. And I might make a video of myself doing that because I have installed all 19 disks through this and it is such a nightmare because all you're doing is exactly what you see here. Keep hitting C, takes a second, pops up asking for another disk, another disk every time. So now we're at the right disk. Now this disk right here is the final disk and it's going to go ahead and write everything to Windows. And there you go. We are now completely done. Okay, now to start it, it says right here, start Win Microsoft Windows, just type in Win and press Enter. That's what the little arrow key is, in case somebody doesn't know. All right, now remember when I told you, let me just go ahead and show you about the set version for Windows? Well, you're going to find out why we have to do that right now. So, Win. Very annoying. Also, as you can see here, we do have mouse support, but as you can also tell here, nothing is running. The mouse is jumping everywhere. You know, nothing wants to open. So this is pretty much useless. All right. So to fix this problem, all right, we're going to go ahead and Control Alt to gain control of our mouse. Go up to the top here and click Shutdown. Okay. Now we're going to have to remember this over here because we can't copy and paste into Windows 1 because again, it does not support Windows 1. So lucky for you, you actually have it down in the description so you can just kind of keep looking back and forth. Me, I got to remember this every time, but it's a good thing I've done this once or twice before. So, oh, do not forget to take out your system disk. So, like I do a lot. So here, go to floppy, use physical just to make it simple. And then boot back in. Now, if you ever get an image like this saying can't connect, always hit yes because if you ever have to connect to your floppy while it's turned off or whatever, it always has the drivers and support ready to go. If you hit no, then that means you have to turn it off, enable, and configure your floppy to be turned on every single time. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. All right, so from here, set version. Up, oh, click on click on the screen. Set version, win100.bin 3.34. And if you happen to see what I'm seeing right here, letting you know that the application is updating the version tables, 
Okay, and if it says successful, you're all good to go. So let's see if it actually will work. So we're going to type in shutdown R to reboot. All right, then we're going to type in Windows. I'm sorry, CD Windows. And then from here, type in Win. And there you go. So it pretty much skips the loading screen, which is fine because we don't really need to see the Windows 1.0 load screen act ridiculous. But if everything worked, as you can see now, everything is actually loading and starting. So let's go down to Notepad. Okay, as you can see, Notepad does work. You can also save it. So save as. It's going to save it at under Windows. And boom. Oops. As you can see here, not the greatest in the world. Really? All right. Again, a lot of different bugs and errors that go on with Windows. But again, you would never use this. This is completely useless in every way, shape, or form. Um, because again, you got pain here, so you can do it all. You know, throw a little different. But this is all for nostalgic. If you, if you, I've never actually used this. I didn't start until Win uh, Windows 3.55. I'm sorry, Windows 3, 3.11. You know, so I never actually got to use this at all. But to me, this is more or less a, hey, I can install it. I got it. And you never know. You might come across somebody out there who's using Windows 1.0 or 1.04. And is like, I need help. I don't, it doesn't work properly or this and that. And you can build them a virtual machine. So that's about it. That wraps up our Windows 1.0 installation. Um, again, everything that we did here will be located in the description below. Um, you'll be able to download this exact version of VM, of VM I just built. Um, so if you don't want to have to go through what I just went through or anything to install it, you're more than welcome to. Uh, if you do want to do the install, you'll have the install files I use, the Microsoft MS-DOS 6.22 or the DOS 7.1 installers, as well as the Windows 1.0 installers I have that I use for this video. Okay, so make sure you check back. Um, I'm doing videos as often as I possibly can. Each video will keep going up and up, so my next video should be Windows 2.0, 3.0, 3.11, NT, and so on and so forth until we get to 10. Um, once I start getting to like XP and Vista, I'm probably going to start cutting the videos a little bit shorter through the install times and everything. Um, only because it's going to take a while to do all the, to do some of the installs, and I don't want to sit there watching a progress bar go nowhere. Uh, we'll also do server installs, Linux installs, um, as well as some advanced stuff too. As your ESXi servers are out there, um, I've worked on them as well, so I'll show you how to install an ESXi server for a home lab, as well as how to network each one together, backups and security for each one. Um, you'll also do shared between other virtual machines between each other, how to build a shared device here. Um, yeah, so just keep checking back every so often, see what's going on, and I hope you enjoyed and hopefully it helps somebody out here. Um, if not, at least this is all for nostalgic, you know, haha -ha at this point. So thank you and see you later.